Water neutrality is something which, until the last year or so, very few of us were aware of. I certainly wasn't. But for very good reason, it is now a term which local residents will need to understand and embrace. Some will already have got to grips with the concept and the purpose of water neutrality, but for those who haven't and who would find it useful, here is a guide, hopefully simple, to what it is and why it is so critical for this district. The Sussex North Water Resource Zone, which covers West Sussex from Crawley through Horsham, Billingshurst, Pulborough and down to Chichester, is the most severely overstressed water supply zone in the entire country. This is the result of many decades of very intensive house building, particularly in and around Horsham and Crawley. To address this critical problem, Natural England, a public body sponsored and funded by the Department for Environment, mandated the policy of water neutrality. Put very simply, this policy requires that new building development can only be approved if the developer can demonstrate that it will be water neutral, meaning that the water consumption on the development after completion will be no greater than the water consumption prior to the development. So it will be water neutral. Obviously, any new development, whether residential or commercial, will generate additional water demand. So water neutrality requires that the applicant developer evidences, firstly, the water use in the new development and what it will be, and secondly, that the developer evidences how he will offset this additional water demand, either through alternative water supply source or sources, for example, through drilling boreholes to tap into water supply from outside the district, or through collecting rainwater or recycling grey water from sinks, showers, baths and other water using appliances. An alternative permitted offset is through generating water use savings in existing council owned properties by installing water flow restrictors to those properties. Horsham, Crawley and Chichester councils ran a pilot scheme in 2022 on residential council properties in Crawley. And after fitting flow restrictors to 100 properties, this revealed an average water saving of around 30 litres per person per day. The clear objective of the policy is very logical and very sensible a responsible approach to the critical water supply issue. However, the application of the policy is fundamentally and fatally flawed in its approach to evidencing the water use in the proposed new development. Horsham, Crawley and Chichester councils and their planning departments have agreed between themselves on a purely theoretical assumption that water demand in new build properties in our water resource zone will be restricted to 85 litres per person per day. They do not require the developers to demonstrate that the new properties will meet this target and that all the developer needs to do is to provide details of the efficiency of the water saving devices that will be installed in the property and that theoretically the water demand might not exceed that figure. And how do developers demonstrate this? Very simply, really, they assume, without reference to any actual water use data, that residents will only take one bath a week, will have no more than one shower a day of maximum duration four and a half minutes, will not flush the toilet more than four times a day, and will only very infrequently water their garden or their plants or wash their cars. And these purely theoretical assumptions will be accepted without challenge by the local planning officers. So how do these assumptions stand up against the readily available data of actual water use in the district? The answer is they simply don't. They bear no resemblance to any actual household water use data and are in reality very far from it. The consultants who ran the Crawley pilot scheme for our three councils reported that they had been monitoring actual water use in properties fitted with their flow restrictor devices since 2020, comparing pre and post installation water consumption, which showed that post installation, the consumption was reduced to an average of 166.5 litres per person per day, or very nearly double the 85 litres per person per day water use figure adopted by our district councils. 
National average water use is around 145 litres per person per day. Southern water data indicates an average household water use of around 136 litres per person per day. A recent survey undertaken by Save Rural Southwater on a number of new build houses in the Broadacres development in Southwater indicated in properties of two to four occupants a water consumption of around 160 to 170 litres per person per day. Those being properties which are newly built and fitted with water saving devices. So on any basis the figure of 85 litres per person per day is roughly half what the actual water use data that is readily available reveals. And here's something you can try at home. Check your own twice yearly water bill from Southern Water. It will helpfully tell you what your average daily household water use over the billing period was. Divide this by the number of regular occupants in your property and there will have, you will have your actual per litre per day consumption. It is anything remotely like the 85 litre figure per day, then you deserve a medal and you probably need a very good bath. Why does this matter? It matters because the absurdly low 85 litres per person per day adopted by our local councils sets a very low bar for developers in their offsetting requirements in order to demonstrate water neutrality. They will only need to offset 85 litres per person per day whereas the actual water use in their development when it is completed will be very much higher than that figure, probably double that figure in fact. That eliminates any possibility of achieving water neutrality and totally undermines the core and critical purpose of the water neutrality policy and exposes the district to a very real threat of total water supply failure. Our local planning authorities are already approving applications on this basis and are now seeking to legitimise this fictional and aspirational water use target of 85 litres per person per day in the draft local plan. They need to be strongly challenged on this through the current district plan consultation process. The memory from last May of 20,000 odd households across the district being without water for up to three days and of queuing in car parks for bottled water is a very stark reminder of the vulnerability of our finite district water supply. For more information on water neutrality and on how to respond on the consultation process, which must be done by the end of February, please visit the Save Rural Southwater website, saveruralsouthwater.org. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found this useful. And if you need any more information, please feel free to contact any of the Save Rural Southwater representatives or send a message via our website. Thank you very much.